<coughs> the Speaker has received notice from the First and Deputy First Minister uh, that the Deputy First Minister wishes to make a statement. Uh, before I call the Minister, I would remind members that in light of social distancing being observed by parties, the Speaker's ruling that members must be in the Chamber to hear a statement if they wish to ask the question has been relaxed. Members do still have to ensure that their name is on the speaker's list uh, if they wish to be called for a question. Uh, and they can do this by rising in their place or by notifying the business office or indeed the, table, the speaker's table directly. I would remind members to be concise in asking their question. It's an opportunity to ask questions, not to make speeches. So this is not an opportunity for debate or long, and long introductions will not be allowed. So now I invite the uh, Deputy First Minister to make a comment. Uh, in compliance with Section 52C2 of the 1998 Act, I wish to make the following statement on the 24th plenary meeting of the North South Ministerial Council, which was held in Dublin Castle on the 31st of July 2020. The Irish Government was led by Taoiseach Micheál Martin, TD, who chaired the meeting. Uh, the Executive was led by First Minister Arling Foster and myself, and all Executive Ministers, with the exception of the Minister for Justice, attended the meeting. The First Minister has agreed that I can make this report on our behalf. Ministers welcomed the resumption of meetings of the Council. The meeting provided the new Irish Government with the new Executive and the new Executive with the opportunity to meet formally for the first time and exchange views on a wide range of issues of mutual interest and concern. Ministers received a report from the Joint Secretaries on the work of the NSMC since 2016, including work undertaken across the NSMC sectors. They noted that three meetings of the Council, including one institutional meeting, had taken place since the last plenary meeting in November 2016. The Council noted that the work of the North South bodies uh, has continued to make a significant contribution to communities, society and the economy in both jurisdictions, and also exp expressed appreciation to the boards and staff of these bodies for their work since 2016. The Council also welcomed the mutually beneficial cooperation that has taken forward uh, between ministers and their departments across the areas of cooperation. Ministers noted the ongoing work of the North West Strategic Growth Partnership and the continued engagement of senior officials from both administrations with regional stakeholders regarding the direction and priorities for the North West region. With regard to coronavirus, the Council was briefed by the Chief Medical Officers, Dr Ronan Glynn and Dr Michael McBride, on the current public health situation and an ongoing cooperation in the response to the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic. Ministers extended their condolences to all those who have lost loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. They also expressed their appreciation to all those that have played a part in the COVID-19 response, in particular the health and social care workers who have shown extraordinary courage and dedication in their work on the front line. The Council noted that senior representatives of the Executive and the Irish Government and the Chief Medical Officers met at the NSMC Secretariat offices in Armagh on the 14th of March to review the situation regarding the COVID-19 virus and how best to address the outbreak. At that meeting, ministers affirmed that everything possible would be done in coordination and cooperation between the Irish Government and the Executive, and with the active involvement of the health administrations in both jurisdictions to tackle the outbreak. Senior representatives of both administrations have continued to meet regularly to discuss the ongoing COVID-19 response. The Council noted the Memorandum of Understanding on Public Health Cooperation on COVID-19 Response agreed between Departments of Health North and South on the 7th of April. The Council welcomed the close and productive cooperation that has taken place between health ministers, chief medical officers and health administrations, north and south, to deliver an effective public health response. Ministers agreed that an early meeting of the Council in the health sector should review uh, ongoing cooperation in responding to the pandemic. The Council also noted the impact of the pandemic on society and on the economy north and south and the measures put in place by both administrations to support communities and businesses affected by the crisis and to assist with economic recovery. Ministers agreed that the upcoming meetings of the Council in relevant sectors will consider how north-south approaches could contribute to the promotion of economic and social recovery. Ministers noted the continued commitment of the Irish Government and the Executive to work through the North-South Ministerial Council to help deliver projects that will benefit people across the island, including through investment 
in infrastructure, which will support cooperation and unlock the full potential of the economies of both jurisdictions. The Council welcomed progress made to date in progressing commitments identified in Section E of the Fresh Start Agreement relating to infrastructure and support uh, cooperation, and noted the new and renewed commitments set out in the new decade, new approach, and the associated Irish Government commitments. I now call the Chairperson of the Executive Office Committee, Colin McGrath. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Ministers for um, the statement today. Um, maybe just to gently push, this is our third week back, and we've had very light amounts of uh, work from the Executive, and this statement could have been probably two weeks ago, but I, I thank that it has been given today. Uh, and you reference in the statement that there was appointments to the Board of Tourism Ireland, and just maybe that there were other vacancies that were on uh, some of the boards as well. And given um, that the areas that the North South Ministerial Council can cover, which include health, environment, agriculture, transport, and with Brexit approaching in just a matter of a few weeks, um, will the Council be undertaking all it can to fill those vacancies? And would it be possible maybe just to get uh, in writing just what the vacancies are um, at this stage going forward? Uh, to the Chair of the Committee for, for that uh, question. And I think just to say this was the first opportunity we've had to be able to come to the Chamber, except that um, it's most preferable in the, in, in the aftermath of an NSMC that we come very quickly because the, it's still current and we're able to discuss things. So we take that on board. Um, in terms of the appointments themselves, uh, you're right, the Council approved the appointment of four directors of Tourism Ireland um, with effect from the 31st of July to the 31st of July, or 30th of July 2025. And the members that were appointed were Ruth Andrews, Joe Dolan, Stephen McNally and Mary Mulvey. And they were nominated by the Irish Government. Um, and then obviously there are a number of other outstanding um, board appointments, at 10 in total from the Executive, which we need to move very speedily to be able to uh, nominate. And obviously there will be a, a lot of sectoral meetings now happening over the next weeks and months. And I think that will be plenty of opportunity for, to get all those positions filled as quickly as possible. <coughs> members will note that there are considerable numbers wishing to ask questions and remind you that some leeway is given to the Chair of Committees and others would ask them to be more concise. I call George Robinson. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Chair. <coughs> and, uh, can, I, can I ask the uh, Deputy Minister, does the Minister accept that Great Britain is our largest market and that avoiding friction in trade east-west should be the Executive's key priority from the ongoing negotiations? I can um, absolutely say to the member that uh, it's in all our interests to minimise disruption to trade. Um, we want to see frictionless trade north-south and east-west. Um, we are in the middle of, uh, certainly as a people, being used as a pawn in the middle of the Brexit debate right now, and that's not a, a good place for us to be. Our people need certainty, our businesses need certainty, and we will work to make sure that that happens. This was one of the issues which we did discuss at the NSMC, and no doubt we'll have to keep coming back to it because what we need to see is, is an outcome that actually serves the people here well. Could, could remind members to make sure that they're speaking into an adjacent microphone for the benefit of Hansard and other members? And I call Pat Sheehan. The last Concorda. Uh, could I ask the Deputy First Minister if there was any discussion around scoping out the possibility of a high speed rail link between Belfast and Dublin? Gormagot. Thanks again to the member for the, the question. Um, certainly, this was uh, something that we uh, discussed. Improving connectivity between Belfast and Dublin is key in delivering opportunities for better connecting the island of Ireland and enhancing our respective economies. Our rail network, whilst relatively small, does present unique opportunity in this regard. In line with this and the commitments within the new decade, new approach, officials within the Department for Infrastructure have begun early discussions with their counterparts in the south regarding the process for developing a feasibility study um, of a potential high-speed rail connection between Belfast, Dublin and Cork. I know certainly our colleagues in the North West would also include Derry in, in that um, also. Um, this work is ongoing and the Minister for Infrastructure, Nic Nicola Mallon, intends to engage with Minister Ryan to discuss the improvement of the transport links by both rail and road between Belfast and Dublin. An NSMC uh, transport sectoral meeting is scheduled to take place in early October where this and other matters will be discussed, following which Minister Mallon will provide a report to the Assembly. I call Mike Nesbitt. Deputy Speaker, thank you very much. Um, I, I trust the Deputy First Minister would agree with me that, that a seven-week delay in reporting back to the Chamber is not consistent with the spirit of the new decade, new approach, 
commitment to transparency and accountability. M my question is with regard to the commitment to an early meeting of the Council in health sector mode. Could she tell us when that took place and what the outcome was? Um, just to, again to concur, as I did with the Chair of the Committee, I think that it's important that we do turn these statements around very quickly and we are able to bring reports back to the House. The, the Assembly has only been sitting now for is it two weeks, so obviously there's been a bit of a delay with that, but, but I, I, I take on board what the Member has said. There is a health sectoral meeting planned for the 2nd of October, which is only a short time away. Um, I believe that meeting is going to be done virtually, just given restrictions, and, um, but I think that given where we are at uh, across these islands in terms of uh, COVID and the rise and, and what we're witnessing, um, then it's really important that that meeting happens uh, as quickly as possible so that we can share um, our information and that we can work together wh where we can. Nicole Paula Bradshaw. Um, Deputy Speaker, um, Deputy First Minister, the ambition um, for the All Ireland Memorandum of Understanding was that there be greater cooperation and alignment across the island. Yet the nature of restrictions reimposed in Belfast versus Dublin is different, the statistical analysis presented by the CMOs is different, and the communications are different. As such, can you provide us with some examples of where the Memorandum of Understanding is working or has worked? Thank you. I think the, the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding was crucially important in our fight back because of, 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 in terms of COVID-19 because, as we know, the virus doesn't recognise any borders. It doesn't stop somewhere uh, because there's a different jurisdiction. So I think that, crucially, the work that we've been able to do across the island in terms of sharing data, the modelling, the work that we've done with the, the app to make sure that no matter where you travel on the island, that that is uh, working. And I think that those are all really crucially important things. But I think we could do more. I think we could do an awful lot more, um, and I hope that at the sectoral meeting um, on the 2nd of October that the two health ministers and the chief medical officers, in response to the current situation of COVID, will be able to bring forward maybe additionality to the Memorandum of Understanding on what else can we do to work together to get us through the winter months, which we all acknowledge readily are, are going to be very, very challenging. I call Trevor Clark. I ask the Deputy First Minister for her assessment of the action taken by the Taoiseach and the Irish Government in response to the, some of the Ministers and their colleagues in relation to breaking the health guidelines. Well, I can say to the Member that's a matter for the Taoiseach and for the Dáil. I call Emma Sheeran. I get to ask you, call you. Minister, can you give us an outline as to how EU-related uh, matters of interest to both the North and the whole island of Ireland will be taken forward by the North-South Ministerial Council? Thanks again to the member for the question. Um, at the plenary meeting in Dublin, the Council had a very useful discussion around the implication, impl implications of the British Government's withdrawal from the EU, and there was a recognition that both jurisdictions share a common interest of minimising disruption to trade and economic activity on the island. The North-South Ministerial Council provides a useful forum for consideration of such matters, and ministers will engage, continue to engage on the implications of the withdrawal from the EU, both at NSMC sectoral meetings and then also bilaterally, where appropriate, and we will consider EU exit again at the next plenary. Officials from both jurisdictions will also continue with their ongoing engagement. You will also be aware that the Joint Committee established by the withdrawal agreement shall keep under constant review the extent to which the implementation and the application of the protocol maintains the necessary conditions for North-South cooperation, and that, that the specialised committee itself shall examine proposals concerning the implementation and application of the protocol from the NSMC. Should matters be identified which ministers believe merit consideration by the specialised committee, the NSMC provides a mechanism to enable this. I call Paula Bradley. Speaker, can I ask the Deputy First Minister if she can give us any update on progress of the Ulster Canal? Um, thank the, the member for um, that question. So again, this is, there has been some progress made. Um, back, as you know, in 2007, Waterways Ireland was given NSMC approval to explore the potential um, to restore the Ulster Canal from Upper Loch Erne to Clonus. Phase one of the restoration of the Ulster Canal from Upper Loch Erne to Castle Saunderson is now complete. Preliminary work on phase two from Clonus to Clonfad has now commenced. And phase three, when complete in the future, will connect Castle Saunderson with Clonfad and complete, complete the restoration of the Ulster Canal from Upper Loch Erne to Clonus. I welcome this progress that's been made with the restoration of the Ulster Canal and the commitment from the Irish Government to complete the third phase. This uh, project will deliver social and economic benefits 
and will absolutely improve citizens' lives. I call Martina Anderson. And I want to thank the, uh, the Joint First Minister for that statement. And can I ask the Minister to give us an indication as to what focus the North South Ministerial Council will have on the North West Development Fund and any future funding arrangements? Thanks again um, for the question. The, the current North West Development Fund is still running and with funding approved up until 2022. This includes a six-month extension of the funding period to take account of the COVID pressures uh, and the implications that's had on projects. The total committed investment by the Executive is approximately £2.15 million. This commitment is much funded by the Irish Government as agreed in the Fresh Start <coughs> Agreement in 2015. The North West Development Fund has delivered a number of successful projects. Some examples are developing economic growth through trade and investment missions, developing the physical environment by contributing to the Interreg Greenways project, and through the North West Sports Development, strengthening community cohesion and well-being. The Irish Government indicated in New Decade New Approach that they are committed in principle to provide further funding to the North West Development Fund in collaboration with the Executive. The North West Regional Development Group has written, recently written to us seeking a continuation of the fund beyond the current arrangements, and the First Minister, Minister and I are considering this request, which will require engagement with the Irish Government. I call Matthew to. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Deputy First Minister, there's been a lot of chatter in the last few weeks about what is and isn't in the Good Friday Agreement. Will she recognise that par paragraph 17 of, the, of strand 2 of the agreement says the North South Ministerial Council should consider the European Union dimension of relevant matters, including the implementation of EU policies and programmes and proposals under consideration in the EU? To that end, can she be more specific about what exactly the North South Ministerial Council is doing in relation to the implementation of the protocol and the protection of this entire island, and why we are waiting until December to have a plenary uh, session in the North South Ministerial Council after the deadline for the, the mem between member the UK has asked this question. Thank you very much. Minister. As, as I've said um, in my introductory remarks, this was an issue which was discussed at the, exec at the North South Ministerial Plenary. Um, it's not the only forum in which to discuss it, but it certainly is a forum to discuss it. Um, if we happen to need um, other meetings outside of the plenary um, format, uh, we'll not be shy in asking for them, particularly given uh, the volatility of the situation that we find ourselves in um, right now. Uh, what we want to see is an outcome that works for people here. What we want to see is certainty. What we want to see is the, minimising, or the minimisation of any disruption to trade, um, and those things are all crucially important. But we are clearly in politically volatile times in terms of Brexit and what that means. But what we hope is that there is an outcome through the Joint Committee, and um, I'm happy to, to keep the member updated on any discussions that we have on a north-south basis in regards to Brexit. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you. Uh, Mr. De Speaker and uh, Minister, um, Deputy Minister, in your statement you, refer, you, you affirmed that everything possible would be done in coordination and cooperation between the Northern Ireland Executive and the Government of the Republic of Ireland to tackle the latest outbreak of COVID. In representing a border constituency, it's often the situation that neighbours from either sides of the border find themselves going on the same holiday abroad together. When they return, those living in the Fermanagh Tyrone area have to self-isolate for two weeks. If this is violated, they suffer the full vigours of the law. While those living in the Calvin Monaghan area, they are free to socialise, mix, even come, come to Enniskillen, even come to Enniskillen to socialise. Uh, what discussions has there been in relation to this cooperation and coordination on issues which could result in the spread of COVID? or endanger those. Thanks. And, and the member does represent a, a border constituency and understands the challenges and understands very well that the virus doesn't stop just because you move from one constituency to another or one jurisdiction to another. That's why North-South cooperation on the issue of COVID is absolutely vital if we're going to be successful. I welcome the fact that there has been ongoing engagement at both chief medical officer level but also at ministerial level. But I think that as we face into the winter months, we need to seriously... Uh, really ramp that up and work, work collectively um, across the island. We live in a very small island and you know, changes and difference in, in, in approaches actually confuses the public, and particularly in border um, constituencies. So I think that uh, we have to have a very um, eagle eye to, to, to all of that and all of the restrictions that are in place and, and work in tandem as best as we can. I call Jonathan Buckley. Deputy Speaker, is the Deputy First Minister still committed to an extraordinary British-Irish Council meeting? And who does she believe or consider uh, has been most reluctant to see one 
take place thus far? I am very strongly on the record of saying that we need to have a British Irish um, Council meeting, and we have asked for it and pushed for it um, on a number of occasions, and even as, as recently as the weekend when we had a, a, a call with Scotland, Wales, and uh, Michael Gove. Uh, we again mentioned it there. I think that it is important that we have these meetings on a, on a north, south, east, west basis. I am committed to all. Um, aspects of, of the Good Friday Agreement and all of its institutions. So I think that that, that meeting should happen as a matter of urgency. I call Colin Gilden you. Uh, last year, and I want to thank the Minister for making the statement today. And I note the, uh, the cooperation between the Chief Medical Officers uh, going right back to the 14th of March. But in light of the fact that we are seeing very, very worrying increases in the spread of the virus from Dublin to Derry, we are also seeing the unequal impact that is having in working class communities from Ballymun to Ballymena. And we are seeing postcodes identified here in the north which run along the border. To what extent is there effective cooperation between the executive and uh, the, the, the government in Dublin in relation to COVID-19? So I think that, um, as I said, I think the extent of, of, of the ongoing discussion is it has been happening from the very start, from the very outset of COVID. But I do think it's time for us to renew our efforts and, and renew our focus, just given what we're facing in the, in the weeks and months ahead. You rightly point out, you know, border communities, um, Strabane and Lifford. You know, we can see the the, the, the pattern uh, in terms of um, virus spread, and those are all worrying developments. So now, more than ever, I think we need to be very uh, coherent and joined up in terms of our approach and continue to, to, to both through the, the vehicle of the North-South Ministerial um, Sectoral Meetings, but also just on an ongoing basis, we need to have that regular engagement if we're going to be successful across this island in driving down transmission rates and trying to uh, see our po population get to the other side of, of this coronavirus. I call Stuart Dixon. Much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Deputy First Minister. Deputy First Minister, Brexit looms large as the UK approaches the end game. Can the First and Deputy First Ministers assure this House that they jointly share the best interests of people and businesses, given the often conflicting views of their respective parties? I don't think it's any secret um, to the member that, the, that myself and the First Minister have a different outlook in terms of Brexit, but we have a commonality in terms of um, protecting our people and what we want to see is a minimisation of any disruption. So I hope that there's a, a political outcome achieved here over the course of the next number of weeks and certainly I'll use my best endeavours to, to, to play my part in all of that. I call Emma Rogan. Given the rise in positive cases of COVID-19 in recent days and the challenges that the, the two governments face together, can the Minister confirm when the next Health Secretarial meeting will be? So the next uh, meeting is going to take place on the 2nd of October, which is very timely just given where we're at in terms of the virus spread right now. Um, we ourselves and the executive will have uh, big decisions to take around how we uh, manage our way through this crisis. So I think that meeting on the 2nd of October, which is only a, a number of days away, will be really useful and, and, and timely. I call Justin McNulty. I would like to thank the, the Deputy First Minister for coming today to make a statement. Um, Minister, do you agree, given what previous members have said about the increase in numbers in COVID cases from Dublin to Derry, that we should adopt now a Fortress Ireland approach with even heightened collaboration north and south to ensure we battle this, this virus effectively together? We live on a very small island uh, with a small population. Um, we are one epidemiological unit and I think our best defence against this virus is actually to fight it in an all-island way. So um, just as we have that uh, Fortress Ireland approach when it comes to animal health and plant health, I think it is obviously important that we apply that also to our people. I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, Minister, can I ask what discussions you, that you have had um, in relation to higher education within the context of the North-South Ministerial Council? As you are very well aware, uh, the New Decade New Approach has a commitment uh, for the Northern Ireland Executive to deliver the expansion of McGee up to 10,000 students. And the Irish Government has also made a commitment to support a capital investment for the same expansion. It is important that both governments jointly progress uh, this policy and project. Uh, thanks to the member for, for the question. Actually, the, there will be a, a sectoral meeting um, 
I think it's at the very start of November, where again this will get a, a lot of um, discussion. But the executive, as you know, has reaffirmed our commitment that has been set out in the new decade, new approach to establish the Graduate Entry Medical School on the McGee, uh, comp, uh, on the McGee campus, and also like, absolutely in recognition of the fact that this is a transformative project um, for the North Northwest region, and both in terms of economic recovery and then the wider social benefits that come with it also. Its objective now is to progress the project to secure a sustainable outcome within the fastest feasible time frame, with the aim of the first intake of 70 students in September 2021. And this is a complex project, no doubt, involving a number of departments and external agencies. And the Executive Office is currently working with the Departments of Health, Economy and Finance to prefer uh, further advice to the Executive on the issues which need to be addressed to secure the sustainability. Um, the Inclusive Futures Fund will provide some 15 million um, funding for three years to provide the platform for the school's long-term success. And the executive has also provided an assurance that it will provide funding for this project going forward. So, a good news story for the North West. I call Doug Beatty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, I thank the minister so far. I, I've heard a lot of people saying that, that COVID doesn't respect. Uh, borders. I can absolutely agree with that. It doesn't respect borders. And considering the free movement of people on this island, off this island, uh, on the rest of the British Isles, surely the minister should be arguing for an all islands approach, as in the British Isles approach to dealing with COVID-19. I, I think I, I have been on the record of saying that we should approach this uh, in a very joined up way. So I do believe we need an all island approach. I actually think we should have an all islands approach, particularly when it comes to things like travel. You know, the, the, there's differences right across, and that's very confusing for the public and trying to work out where exactly um, they take their lead from. So th 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 there is merit in all of those things. I'm happy to work across these islands in terms of trying to battle COVID-19 because it's people first in the middle of all of this. It has to be about people and getting them through this pandemic and us showing political leadership to take them there. I call Jim Allister. COVID, did the council discuss the undermining of the public messaging? And in that regard, as a token of her own sincerity, did she apologise for attending the story funeral? And even now, does she yet apologise for attending the story funeral? The North South Ministerial Council did not discuss that. I call Trevor Lunn. Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement. Um, the statement references the ongoing work of the Northwest Strategic Growth Partnership and also indicates cooperation to unlock the full potential of the economies of both jurisdictions. So could I ask her specifically about any discussion there's been about the N2A5 project and also the Narrow Water Bridge? Yes, um, so we talked about bo both, both issues and the A5 for example, will greatly, as you know, will greatly enhance the connectivity of the North West. So it's a project that, that we all want to see um, finalised. It will reduce journey times, it will improve journey time reliability, road safety and, and all of that. So the, in the new, new decade, new approach, the Irish Government reaffirmed its £75 million funding commitment up to 2022 for the A5. And following the question of the decision to proceed with the scheme in November 2018, the Department of Infrastructure is now progressing the necessary work to enable a fresh decision to be taken. And I understand that the Commissioner's report on the uh, public local inquiry into the environmental statement addendum 2019 and related matters has been uh, forwarded to the Department of Infrastructure. So I think we we'd expect to see some um, progress being made there. And in terms of the um, Narrow Water Bridge, again, uh, absolutely committed to progressing this project, um, which has very strong local support uh, to link the communities on both sides of Carlingford Lock and to take full advantage of the tourism potential. Um, and again, I understand that Minister Mallon visited the project recently and, she, um, and, and that the work on updating of the economic appraisal of options continues within the Department for Transport, Tourism and Sport. So I think, again, we hope that we will be able to see some progress being made there now um, also. Members, there's a considerable period of time remaining for this section. So if any member wishes to ask a further question to the Deputy First Minister, I would ask them to indicate by rising in their place. I call Justin McNulty. I would ask you, Carla. Minister, can I ask if the plight of frontier cross-border workers was raised at the North, North South Ministerial Council? And as per the EU law, which has been devised to me by um, various ministers, North and South, the responsibility for helping and assisting those 
papal lies with the Minister for Communities. Can you confirm that and can you confirm that you have uh, made requests to the Minister for assistance for the, the people who have been left behind and who have fallen through the net and supports for uh, COVID supports uh, throughout this pandemic? I can confirm that yes, I have raised that issue on numerous occasions and I've uh, written to, um, to the Irish Government on the issue. I think that it's a disgrace that those workers have been left behind. Um, so I think that there needs to be a resolution to it and it's in the Irish Government's hands to find a resolution to it to make sure that those workers do receive the payment which they are entitled. I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, thank you for your reply to the previous question, but it wasn't the question that I asked. I asked what conversations have taken place within the North-South Ministerial Council in relation to the further expansion of the McGee campus to 10,000 uh, students, not about the medical school, um, that's a separate issue, but it's about the further expansion uh, and the commitments made in the new decade, new approach, uh, or, uh, new approach and the commitments by the Irish Government for capital um, uh, expenditure and investment in that same expansion. So if you could answer that question, please. Well, sorry if I misunderstood your question. Um, the, the issue wasn't discussed in detail at the NSMC because obviously we had a wide agenda, but there are, um, as I said, a number of sectoral meetings coming up where that issue will get a, a much more uh, in-detailed um, hearing. So I think it's due to meet on the 6th of November, so hopefully that will be an opportunity for a fulsome discussion around the issue. But we are committed to the full expansion of McGee. We have made that very clearly, and it's a commitment in the new decade, new approach. And um, I think we just have to work very hard collectively at actually trying to deliver it. I call Matthew Toe. Mr Deputy Speaker, and thanks uh, for, for, for letting us all in again. Uh, Deputy First Minister, in relation to what we discussed earlier on, will you use the North South Ministerial Council to advance one particular question? We all here want to see maximum access for Northern Ireland businesses, both North South and, yes, critically East West. But can she advocated by the North South Ministerial Council that Northern Ireland businesses be given access to EU trade deals. That is implicit in the, in the Northern Ireland Protocol and it is something that, with goodwill, should be able to be agreed in Brussels and with, hopefully, goodwill from London. Yes, I am happy to take that up and, and to uh, raise it at the next meeting. I think that, in an ongoing way, actually, with, um, with our colleagues in, in, in Dublin, um, I think that we use this forum um, as a way to try and advance these things, but outside of that, there are obviously other opportunities, and I'm happy to take that up. I call Jim Allister. You said that undermining the public message was not discussed in respect of COVID at the council meeting. Since then, of course, we had the scandal relating to the golf dinner in Dublin. Does the minister think that those who attended that and who apologised were right to apologise? And if they were right, why is she not apologising? Again, the issue was not discussed at the NSMC. I call Trevor Lunn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, just to develop the narrow water situation, Minister, um, I know that it would have a considerable infrastructural uh, effect on that area, but would you, do you agree with me that the, the tourism aspect of it is, is potentially immense? To join up the Cooley Peninsula, Carlingford and the Mourns, on which considerable money has been spent, in the past on tourism development in the Mourns. So it seems a pity that this can't be progressed quickly. It has been going on for about 10 years. You're absolutely right. I mean, it has been going on for so long and then people start to lose heart and think it's not going to be delivered. So I think that we have a restored assembly and executive. We have the NSMC now meeting. Um, I intend to pursue this uh, project because you're, you, you can't even overstate the tourism potential that this will have for, for the area. Um, I think it's immense. So um, I think it's in all of our interests to try and get this project delivered upon as quickly as possible, given that it has been so long in the making. I call Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, given that what we have heard today about the cross, uh, the no respecter of borders in terms of COVID-19, which I fully agree with, um, the fact that some of our sporting organisations operate on a uh, cross-border theme, and particularly the GAA, does the Deputy First Minister have any comments in relation to what has appeared to be a breach of COVID regulations with the mask uh, pitch invasion at Dungan? Can, can I remind members that it is meant to be questions about the ministerial statement? I will invite the Minister, if she wishes, to make a response. Well, it is not related to the NSMC. I call Paula Bradshaw. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting us back in. Um, my question relates to the health meeting that's forthcoming, and I suppose all of us MLAs will have so many emails in our inbox around the waiting lists and the delays because of the reconfiguration for COVID. To what degree will you be looking to maybe look at an all-island approach to actually getting those waiting lists down in terms of maybe sharing capacity? Thank you. 
I mean, I think the detail of that would, would fall to the, the health minister. Um, so maybe the member would want to maybe take that up with the health minister. But certainly, um, there are opportunities for us to work across this island. Um, our waiting lists were already in a dire situation before COVID, and obviously, a lot of things have been put on hold just as we tried to respond to the pandemic. But we're going to have to be, uh, find ways to, to uh, make sure that we look after people's health outside of the COVID um, situation. And for those people that have been waiting a long time, I'm quite sure there are, there are avenues for us to be able to work across the island to be able to provide people um, the opportunity to get the medical attention, which they obviously will, will, will require. So I think there's going to be a need for us all to work really hard at actually trying to address the waiting list because the, I mean, we, we know they're, they're dire. Uh, as I said, they were before COVID and they certainly will be in the even worse state on the other side of this. I call Martina Anderson. Um, thank you, and thank you for letting us in again. Um, Minister, could you elaborate a little bit more on your statement when you talked about the All-Ireland Economic Recovery and what way that was dealt with at the North-South Ministerial Council meeting? Uh, will there be a sectoral meeting on that, or was it, did it go into any great detail at the meeting? Well, I think the, the meeting itself, um, I suppose, had an understanding of the current situation that we find ourselves in, dealing with a global pandemic, how we're going to build on the other side of that, how we're going to build the economy, um, how we're going to you know, look after society as a whole. So I think that there will be, again, uh, more opportunities to advance um, the economic recovery work through the sectoral meeting, which um, I'm, I'm assuming, again, I don't have a date for that one in front of me, but um, it'll certainly be, be um, coming up shortly. But I think that we have to have a serious conversation about the type of society that we want to build on the other side of this. And the economic recovery is going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be very, very challenging. So we need to think outside the box and actually work collectively across this island. I call Mike Nesbitt. Uh, Deputy Speaker, thank you. Is, is the Minister aware of why the Justice Minister was, was absent and were justice issues discussed? The, no, I'm not aware why, the just, I can't remember why the Justice Minister wasn't available to attend, um, but there were no issues that were discussed that, were, um, that fell within her remit that we weren't um, able to deal with. And that concludes questions to the minister, ministers on the statement. I'd ask members to take their ease for a few moments. Thank you.